All right. So today I want to show you guys how to properly utilize my fitness Files website version. So as you can see here, I have all of my meals imported for tomorrow. And if I scroll all the way down at the bottom here, it shows me my total, my daily goal and my remaining macros left over. So as you can see, I'm a little bit over on both my carbs and my fats, and I'm perfect with my protein here. So when this happens, I want to try to get myself out of the red. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find something that is um, a fat option, and I'm going to go ahead and bring that number down. So what I want to use is this right here where it says Brazil nuts. This is probably the best option for me to go ahead and tweak. So I'm going to change that to five grams and see what happens. So when I scroll down here, now you can see I'm at zero fat and zero protein remaining, which is perfect. So I'm a little bit over on my carbs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the meal that has the highest amount of carbs. So it looks like meals one and two are both tied at 46 grams of carbs. Um, meal two has 29 grams of protein, which is more than 20 grams at meal one. So in that case, I know that in meal two, that my protein is going to satiate me. So I'm going to go ahead and take away my carbohydrates from meal two. So I'm just going to bring those down a little bit just to bring me closer to that zero number. And perfect. So zero straight across the board. Ideally, this is great. Yes, it doesn't have to be perfect. You do want to keep your macros within four grams at the end of the day, and you want to stay out of the negative. So as long as you're at red zeros, that's totally fine. If you're anything past that, then you want to go back and manipulate something up here. So the way that you do that, just like you saw me do, is if I click on these blueberries here, 25 servings of one gram is 25 grams of blueberries. Same thing with strawberries. 25 servings of one gram of strawberries is 25 grams of strawberries. So the reason that I do this is because it gives me full control. So say I scanned in these strawberries, it's going to pop up as one serving of 100 grams because that's what it says on the nutrition facts. However, that's not what I want. I don't want 100 grams. So what I did was I changed that to one gram and I only want 25. So that is the way that you want to do it for all of your food options if you aren't going to eat the whole serving size so that you can take complete control over that macronutrient number. So as you can see here, seaweed salad, one serving of 60 grams, which was totally fine. But if I wanted to change that, then I could always do 70 servings of one gram, which is 70 grams. So pretty much as you can see, everything is either weighed in grams, ounces, or fluid ounces. Um, my protein is always weighed cooked in ounces. Everything else is weighed cooked in grams. And then my liquid is always weighed in fluid ounces. Okay. Beautiful. So as you can see here, this is the add food option. At this point, you should have already scanned in all of the options on your phone, um, using the barcode to upload that specific food option to your MyFitnessPal diary. Now, if you are on the website version and you need to find any food, all of your history is going to be down in here, but you can go ahead and type in anything that you need to find up here in the search bar. One that I am going to show you is brown rice cooked. So this one, you won't want to scan the barcode because it's going to give you the nutrition facts for weighing it dry. And I just want you cooking your rice in bulk and then weighing it out after. So this is the option that I use right here. Um, one gram, and then I'll just change this to however much I want. Okay. So there's that. And then once you have that same thing with like basmati white rice, as you can see here, in my food diary, if I scroll down here, I have Tilda Basmati Rice White Cooked, 80 grams. So these are the exact ones that I like to use. Um, if you're having trouble finding them, then you can go ahead and shoot me a text and I can help you to navigate those. But those are ideally the ones that you want to use. Again, you don't want to weigh those dry or you're not going to get the proper macronutrient breakdown. Okay. Another cool thing you can do here is quick tools where you can quick add any calories. Say that you're eating a food item and you scan the barcode and it doesn't pop up. It's not in the database and you don't really feel like creating, you know, a food entry for the database, which you can do. Then you can go ahead and just 
type in the carbs, the fats, and the protein. Okay. And that's just a quick option. Or maybe you um, added a little bit of sauce while you were eating out and you wanted to go ahead and track that. You can be like, okay, I had about five more grams of carbs. So it's a really cool uh, tool to use whenever you need it. Okay, so going back to this quick tools, you can also remember a meal. So say I wanted to remember this breakfast for the future, I can go ahead and click save meal, type it in, breakfast, save meal, la-di-da. That way I can just upload it whenever I want it. Another cool option here under the quick tools is you can copy to date. So this is tomorrow's meal plan, which is also going to be for the rest of the week. I don't really like to mix things up throughout my week because I am all for consistency and I just, it's a headache. So I just want to make sure that everything is, you know, weighed out, portioned, and I'm good to go, especially with such a busy schedule. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this over to the next day, and I'll continue to do this throughout the days. So quick tools, copy from date, copy from Wednesday. Perfect. Quick tools, copy from date, copy from Wednesday. And I'll continue to do that throughout all of them. You can do this on your app as well. Um, and I'll do that for the next five days. Okay. And at the end of each day, all I have to do is come in here or in my app, click complete this entry so that my coach can see it and we are good to go. The thing that's going to give you a headache is if you're in my fitness file every single day, trying to log everything that you're eating, weigh things out, manipulate the macronutrient intake, that's pretty much going to set you up for failure. So in order to be successful, you want to pre-plan an entire day. Um, always do it at least the night before, especially if you are going to mix things up. So that way you have everything planned in your MyFitnessPal, ready to go. You shouldn't even have to look at this the next day. Your meals should be prepped, ready to rock so that you can just come in and complete this entry here. So another thing I kind of want to chat it about is say that there um, isn't a uh, food entry in here that you're looking for. So let's use... For example, I'm going to just type in brown rice again, um, but this could be anything really. These check marks right here mean that it's verified. Okay, so these are ideally the ones that you want to use. However, only if you are able to change this to one gram or ounces so that you can get a correct measurement. So when this happens where none are in grams, I'll type in whatever the food option is, and then I type in grams next to it so that that pops up. Obviously, you're not going to have the green check marks here. They're not verified, but what you can do is change that to one gram and then so on and so forth. If you're ever not sure if these calories are correct, if they kind of look all over the place, what I like to do is go to Calorie Keen. And this is a really cool app as well, but you can actually search for food in here and it'll give you the entire calorie breakdown. Um, they have a calorie breakdown for a bunch of restaurants as well. You can browse the food database. So it's actually really cool. So I use this anytime I'm not sure about how many calories are in something or maybe I went out to eat. Um, so on that topic of if you are going out to eat, for example, so Let's say that I'm going out to eat on Friday, okay? So what I'll want to do is I'll come down here. It's going to be my dinner, and I'll look for the restaurant in here. I already looked at the restaurant. I looked at the menu. I know what I'm going to have, okay? So I'm going to look at it in here. So BJ's, um, I don't know if I, that's how you spell it, BJ's Brew House, perfect. So say I'm going to BJ's. BJ's is in the database, okay? A lot of restaurants are. However, again, if they are not, then you can look on their website, look for the um, the nutrition facts. If they don't have nutrition facts, see if it's in calorie keen. If it's not in calorie keen, then what I do is I just use an alike item. So say I was going to a steakhouse, but the steakhouse wasn't in here and I didn't want to log that specific meal per ingredient and guesstimate that. I could always come over here and do Outback Steakhouse. I can look up their menu and then I can use an alike item from Outback Steakhouse because I'm sure the calories are very close to whatever I'm having at the other steakhouse that I'm eating at. So 
Obviously, when you're eating out, it is a guesstimation. It is not perfect, and that is okay. It's not meant to be perfect. This is a lifestyle. So ideally, you don't want to eat out every week. But if you are going to eat out, pre-plan what you're going to have first, and then plug the rest of your day around that meal so that you're still hitting your macronutrients. And another thing that I like to do if I am eating out is I will overguesstimate rather than underguesstimate. That way at the end of the day, I know that I'm under on my calorie intake rather than over. Okay. And so say that I'm having a glass of wine with my dinner, then what you want to do here is you can add food and whether it's red wine or white wine, I like to um, log it as both carbs and fats. So red wine, carbs, and fats. The first option that pops up here is the one that I like to use. You can change this to one ounce. That's a big old glass of wine, <laughs> so on and so forth. But this is how I want you to go ahead and log that so you're taking those calories away from both your carbs and your fats. Again, this is also a guesstimation, so not something you want to do on a weekly basis. Um, but if you do, you have the flexibility, and now you know how to navigate that in your MyFitnessPal. What I don't want you to do is eat light all day and then go out and have a massive dinner and dessert um, that actually does more harm than good. And then that will not set you up for success the next day. A lot of people tend to fall off the next day because they already feel like they fell off the day before. So then it's kind of like, oh, why not? And it takes you know, a little bit more dedication and motivation to get yourself back on track. So if you are going to eat out, please pre-plan it in your MyFitnessPal. Plug the rest of your day in around that meal. Get these close to zero again, and then enjoy your meal, okay? So I hope that this helped for you guys. If you do have any questions, you can message me directly in the Trainerize app. Otherwise, have a wonderful time.